Hello everyone, hope you're having the most fantastic day today. Welcome to the Film Insight channel. For today's video, we're going to discuss even more hotels featured on Hotel Hell and reveal how they're doing now. So sit back, relax and without further ado, let's get right into the content guys. Karen Townsend. I am not giving up. You're just as bad as she is if you don't put your foot down and say no. Hotel Hell is a series that has attracted all manner of sad, incompetent, weak, absurd and sketchy characters running establishments that would have fared better without them. But they sure did give us a lot of entertainment. Chef Gordon Ramsay would tour the country looking for these hapless people to try to give them a helping hand and save their ailing businesses. Sometimes it worked out, but sometimes the owner would turn out to be a nutty, bizarre, passive-aggressive, soft-spoken, wizened hag. We met this particular hag in Season 3, and it took two whole episodes to get through her shenanigans. This episode of Hotel Hell was filmed in November 2015. For this episode, Ramsey travelled to one of America's most celebrated small towns, Harper's Ferry in West Virginia, just 60 miles from Washington, D.C. There he would stay at Towns Inn and meet Karen Townsend, the 70-year-old innkeeper and resident hag for whom we are unlikely to have many nice things to say. Ramsey arrived at the gorgeous hotel and was immediately greeted by Karen at the door, where they exchanged pleasantries and appreciated the quaint little town of Harper's. Little did the unsuspecting chef know that there would be nothing more to appreciate once he crossed that threshold. You will be astounded to know of the goings-on inside the dreadful town's inn. In the first couple of minutes, the celebrity chef was quickly met with a hoarder's bazaar. A strange assortment of hats. Ooh, that's dusty That's there. a pretty special one. Um, why is it so special? Because it's full of dust. Yeah. Century-old dolls, old lady baskets, little hats, and whatever doodads Karen had managed to accumulate over time littered the parlor. Karen had come to run the town's inn courtesy of her son Jason, who, together with his wife Anna, had the brilliant idea to buy her the inn to keep her busy in her waning years. In other words, it was Karen's retirement home. Jason and Anna also thought of the inn as an investment, but she wouldn't know it by looking inside. Ramsey was not having a great first impression. His dismay at finding baskets with dead cockroaches was met with a quick snarky response as Karen replied that they wouldn't charge extra for that particular basket. But there was more strangeness waiting for him in the bedroom. For $130 a night, he would be staying in a musty old room with a locked closet and no space for him to put his clothes and you won't believe the stunt Karen tried to pull. Instead of using the closet that was right there, this woman told Ramsey, who was there to help her, that he can put all his clothes on a couple of hanging hooks on the door. But Ramsey wouldn't have it. He absolutely refused to sleep in a room with a hag's mystery closet of unverified contents. After much protest, she opened it, and he was met not with a bubbling cauldron, but with a hag's clothes upon looking inside. Disappointingly, there were no potions inside either. Inside, there was only numerous dusty clothes that she never even wore. According to the staff, Karen was only ever seen in two outfits, denim and beige. But it wasn't just the closet she'd invaded. There was a battalion of shoes under the wardrobe and dumped linen under the bed. Look at all this stuff. <laughs> Karen, when confronted, straight up told Gordon that he didn't need to be under the bed. Karen was strange, seemingly never at a loss for words, and Ramsey was surprisingly gentle with this one, possibly because she was mad. Having had enough of this hoarder's paradise, Ramsey went to the tiny outdoor eating area where he sat down to the sound of a passing train blaring its horn. In this area, he would also see something else of interest, more hoarding. At least four fridges and freezers were lined up against the hotel's walls, stocked with food for guests because, according to Karen, there was no space inside. Inside the fridges were disintegrating bits of greens, too many unnecessary frozen food items, and the odd ashtray. Karen had hoarded all the space inside and was now extending her claws to the outside of the inn. Despite the appalling fridge situation, the celebrity chef very bravely ordered some food, mac and cheese, some fiesta stew, and a trout. The meal was unsurprisingly abysmal. The stew was five days old, the trout watery, and the mac and cheese greasy, split in the middle, microwaved and unseasoned. Ramsey met Karen's friend Sarah during his meal, as she busied herself sticking labels on the meat and produce in the freezer. 
Sarah proceeded to hand Ramsey a card detailing her many talents, which included Wikipedia editor, an inspirer of loyalty, Greek teacher, artist, and solver of naughty problems. Dirty Sarah. Whatever her naughty problem-solving prowess may have constituted, I wouldn't be surprised if Sarah were to join Karen in the senile bin. Ramsey's next step was to go to the kitchen, where he found a ramshackle operation run by Jeff the cook. The kitchen of the town's inn was a disaster. Jeff was found to have been making boiled burgers and cooking in an oven that was last cleaned a year before. You're boiling a burger? I'm just heating it back up. When you say heating it back up, why are you cooking it from fresh? Not only that, but nearly everything that came out of Jeff's kitchen was reheated in a microwave. The kitchen had five microwaves and two chefs. But the worst was yet to come. You won't believe what the microwave chefs were about to prepare. Ramsey would be absolutely gobsmacked as he sighted a rotisserie chicken that looked like it had just been excavated from the Arctic. The mummified prehistoric chicken was about to be reheated in a microwave when Ramsey intercepted it. He was incensed. So incensed that he displayed that store-bought frozen mummy of a chicken for all customers to see and called the kitchen a filthy, disgusting place, chock full of malpractice right in front of the guests. The outraged Ramsey was in honest shock as he told guests that this outburst wasn't just for the TV show. He was genuinely disturbed by the working standards of the inn. And this has nothing to do with the TV programme, I, I promise you now, based on the bad practices that's going on in that kitchen. So my apologies, but I'm not going to allow you to eat. Karen, however, was still in denial, claiming that the locals liked the inn and blamed the staff for the filth since she delegated the work to them. Jeff was not entirely without blame, since he could have at least made sure the kitchen and oven were clean. He's the one who allegedly concocted a menu that he couldn't handle, but that's all according to Karen, who could not be trusted. Karen was clearly ignorant, oblivious and delusional, and Chef Ramsay had had enough. He retired to his bedroom in exasperation, where he was about to be confronted by something vile. One of Karen's accidents. While upstairs, Ramsey's nose twitched as it sensed something awful reeking in the inn. He brought out his nifty little gadget that measured how filthy a place is. This, viewers, was the piece de resistance of the town's inn. You will be astounded and repulsed at what he found. He took swabs of the mats in the communal bathrooms and the carpet in his bedroom, but it was the filth levels in his bedroom carpet that would be the highlight. The exasperated chef stuck the swab from his bedroom carpet into the filth meter and lo and behold, the reading on the filth meter was astonishing. Anything above 30 would have been a hygiene hazard. What do you think the reading is? 100. 100. 50. 50. The reading wasn't 50, 60, 70 or 100. It was 803. This is how an RBMK reactor explodes. Sorry, wrong show. Ramsey was in disbelief and immediately yelled out for Karen and the staff and told them that it smelled like there was crap on the floor. A server called Gage replied that it smelled like crap because it probably was crap. You were in the bathroom and I think you had an accident on the floor, on the mat. I mean, yeah. There have been times when I have had diarrhea, but it doesn't happen very often. Ramsey was stunned as Brenda, another server, revealed that Karen had had an accident in the bathroom when she first started working there. Karen admitted to having diarrhea on the carpet, but not before attempting to shift the blame onto bikers, bicyclists and hikers who would stay at the inn. She even tried dismissing the issue entirely, saying that at least the room was clean. This woman was bananas. Server Gage was also at a loss and shouted that she was missing the point. There was poop on the floor for Pete's sake. Perhaps Karen thought she could control reality by denying everything. Ramsey could have choked on her food and she would have still given herself a five-star rating. At this point, was it malice, delusion or mental illness? Karen further revealed that she worked 16 hours a day. 16 hours with nothing to show. All this as her friend Sarah waddled about, painting childish murals over cracks and chatting up guests with hag stories. Town's Inn was crumbling from the inside, and the fecal revelation had Ramsey heading for the exits. Server Gage ran after Ramsey like a lover begging him not to go, but it was to no avail. 
However, as Ramsay was downstairs at the door getting his coat ready, Karen slithered downstairs and Ramsay was able to see her office bedroom that was usually locked. He was surprised to find that she slept on a board covered in sheets and quilts. Her bedroom office was the size of a cubicle and separated from the kitchen by a large wardrobe. Ramsay was appalled. This was no way for a lady to live, let alone a grandmother. Her room was covered in things she'd hoarded, and the tired chef tried one last time to get to see her reason by having a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with her. He would later talk to Karen's absent son. This is not normal. What's normal? In What's normal? Seriously. And together, they would try to rehabilitate the old woman. As for the hotel's renovation, the inn was cleaned, decluttered, and the rooms were given an appropriately updated look. Karen was not left out, as she received a clothing and hairstyle makeover, so she would no longer look like a hag. How the town's inn had remained open without being shut down by the authorities all these years is shocking. After the renovation, Gordon left on a pinky swear and a promise from Karen that she would not go back to her old, haggy ways. Karen, anything you'd like to say to the team? Thank you, and I'm looking forward to moving forward. There you go. But wait, this next part might surprise you. Despite Townsend remaining open and doing rather well today, Karen Townsend was disappointed about the Hotel Hell episode. In a 2017 interview, Karen stated that she was unhappy with Ramsey's intervention, which she says focused more on her hag-like habits than the hotel. According to her, he was only there for three days and only spoke to her when the cameras were rolling. She further expressed her displeasure that the renovations were not faithful to the inn's aesthetic and probably cost less than $20,000. Regarding the menu, she added, We really tried to do the Ramsey menu that November, but it wasn't working well. He didn't train the chefs how to cook his fancy dinners. While Hotel Hell seems a bit disingenuous, Karen sounds like a bitter, ungrateful hag. How is Towns Inn doing today? Today, the Towns Inn is doing, well, shockingly enough. It has 3.5 stars on Yelp, 4 stars on TripAdvisor, and 4.2 on Expedia. It even won a 2021 TripAdvisor Traveler's Choice Award. Guests find it to be a charming, homey, quaint little place in a picturesque location. It seems popular with hikers and bikers, and the guests who meet Karen find her friendly and welcoming. Even the negative reviews, which complain of dust, cobwebs, the occasional saggy bed, and uneven and underfunded renovations, still say the staff are kind and the inn charming enough to forgive these missteps. Karen and her son Jason have really turned the place around, though Karen should learn to be a bit more grateful. Well, that will be all for today's video here on the channel. I do hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, be sure to drop a massive like down below and comment your thoughts. Subscribe for more content like this, and turn on those sweet bell notifications for instant access to our content. Have a good one, guys!